enjoy the unknowns because it's 50-50, na? It can go this way or that way. It's for you to figure it out. With little things, it became a lot more personal because I was almost scared that am I her? Am I me? I'm like, what is going on? And I've told Dhruv, who's the maker of the show and the characters, and I said, "Ye gali nahi degi, ye aise nahi baat karegi." Because I just like she's mine, and I will do whatever. I was told very vehemently by some people that you are supposed to dress a certain way and act a certain way and be a certain way. I can't. It took me a while to actually not laugh at Irfan sir's joke, but he was so funny, and I had to tell myself that I'm not his audience. I'm his co-actor who doesn't like him. I get very irked when I am told this is on the only way to do it. My core personality is a rebel. Yeah, there are pros and cons to being this. <laughs> yes. Welcome to Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala. So let's start with that to kind of figure out because you have a certain calmness to you. I do. You have a. You're probably the to first you. person saying this. You have a certain calmness to you. <laughs> You're not. I'm uh, glad. <laughs> yeah, you have some calmness to you, and I think the calmness is not about from a personality standpoint. This comes out, um, and I've always wondered where that stems from. So I want to dig deeper into it. Uh, why do you think you're not a calm person? Because generally, I'm just very like I'm very chaotic. I'm very like I function out of paranoia first that everything will first go wrong in my head in any any circumstance. So I will always like figure out the problems that can potentially come up. They I extrapolate. every situation and then it's like oh, oh my god like if this goes wrong then i have a solution to that and that goes wrong or a solution to that nothing really goes wrong but then i guess i'm trying to embrace that side a little more uh you're planning for the worst case scenario i i'm always preparing for the worst case scenario but i guess i'm trying to unlearn that it's been new but yeah and would you say that's more recent or how were you as a kid were yeah, you the same <laughs> Were you always planning for worst case scenario from the time you were a kid? <laughs> uh, I think it's it's something that's built over that has been built over a period of time. I don't think I was like this as a kid. I, as a kid, in fact, I wouldn't think twice about a lot of things, and uh, that's something that my family always brings up that I was very adventurous. Like I'm sure that if as a ten year old I would have somebody would have told me do bungee jumping, I would have said, "Ha, kar lungi." Yeah. अभी मैं नहीं कर सकती बिकॉज देर आर जस्ट लाइक अ टन ऑफ थॉट्स दैट विल फर्स्ट टेक ओवर एंड देन आई बी लाइक आई एक्चुअली डिड एंड इट एक्चुअली हैपन लाइक आई वॉज जस्ट अबाउट टू जम्प एंड आई स्टार्टेड पैलपिटेटिंग एंड आई वॉज लाइक या आई डिड आई डेड ना वॉज एट दी एज एंड इट वॉज जस्ट अबाउट टू लाइक आई दे वॉज जस्ट अबाउट टू जस्ट ड्रॉप मी और लाइक बेसिकली आई टू जम्प एंड आई सर नो आई कॉन्ट डू इट आई कॉन्ट डू इट जस्ट लाइक जस्ट होल्ड एंड देन दे हेड लेट द बंजी गो सो दे हेड सेट दैट इफ यू नाउ मूव इट्स गोइंग टू पुल यू डाउन सो डोंट मूव इवन इफ यू पैनिकिंग जस्ट वेट वील पुल यू बैक अप जस्ट डोंट बट आई वॉज फुल्ली पैलपुल एज अ किड आई वॉज एक्चुअली अ लॉट मोर इजी गोइंग सो इट्स समथिंग दैट एसेंशियली बिल्ड ओवर टाइम आई फाइंड Childhood super interesting. When I ever talk to any of my guests, right? Because I feel that we are in many ways a reflection of who we were as kids. It's just that we've added on baggage as we've kind of gone along. Yes. And what you said that you lot more adventures when you were a kid, and over time, this you know you have life comes along, and you suddenly like add in all these pieces. But I feel what also comes from our childhood is that what we innately always wanted to be is what starts off when you're like really young. Mm-hmm. Did you always want to do what you do? I remember being wanting to be on stage since I was probably much younger than what I remember myself as because um I used to so I've grown up with my grandparents everybody knows that but I for the first 9 years of my life I lived with my parents in Vasai so we used to have a lot of like extracurricular activities happening all around especially during Ganpati or they have some festivals happening around and then they used to ho- like host all these uh costume pa- uh not costume parties that's what they call a fancy dress fancy competition dress competition um or dance competitions or singing competitions and i used to want to participate in everything so i was always that person and even at home i um i would gather audience and i would say i will like i will be your host yeah. 
for the evening and i don't remember anything after that because this is something this is a story my grandmother keeps telling everybody because she always says this this is something she always wanted yeah. to do but i do remember gathering an audience and i do remember wanting to perform to an audience i started watching um, all your saragama pers and everything because my family is yeah. we love music and we watched everything that had got to do with music yeah. So when I started watching that, and I used to uh, the Marathi Sare Gama Pa was hosted by Pallavi Zoshi, and I w- would like pretend to be her, and I have done all of those things. So I think I always wanted to do this. I always was a performer at heart, and I always wanted to do this. So I guess it somehow found its way back to me. I also like the fact that you said that I always wanted to be on stage. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because and that that also kind of shows, right? Is that and because I, I i know you started off in, in theater and and everyone who i know has an in, who has an innate love for theater will always talk of the stage first before the screen um but what i also liked about your set is the fact that your surroundings also kind of made it kind of push you in a certain things right is the fascination with with music or you were in a home that was clear you know we were all in this whole space together if you kind of again dig deeper into when you were younger is that were there elements of when you were growing up um which you say could okay, they made you the kind of person you are today yeah for sure i feel like all of these things a uh, person to for sure i mean um if i specifically talk about what i love doing today i think if i go back in time i have definitely picked all of that up from somewhere in my life um even though i'm an actor music has always been a very big thing in my life uh and i have been introduced to it by my father by my grandfather by my grandmother and um we have always had like i think uh i know ms subalakshmi because there were cassettes in my house being played um of vishnu sastranamam and all of that all of that so i i i have had all sorts of music playing in my house so there's a lot of that influence my grandfather was always a very curious human being so he would want to learn different instruments he was much older obviously when i was born and growing up but but he still had that curiosity in him and that's something that i picked up from him essentially um So yeah there were a lot of different elements that kind of like I think subconsciously I ended up lifting from different places and it's kind of made me who I am today um it is strange because it like as a kid I was a lot more like easy going like I said and now it's just I I will think twice before climbing a tree mm. and it, that life happened yeah. but <laughs> i don't want to explain that too much but so speaking of life happened um always a performer yes always wanted to be a performer and at some point theater happened how did theater happen actually you know the first time i went on stage was one of those competitions but as, a, but as an actor i went on stage when i was probably 7 or 8 and uh, in my convent school back in vasai they were doing something during christmas mm. like a school yeah. gathering kind of thing and they wanted actors and that was it was a very like unplanned thing oh you want you you want to get me out of class i'll come <laughs> and i'll do something fun and that was just a part of that um so i i, I participated so that was essentially the first time i went on stage but when i properly was able to comprehend that was when i was 11 or 12 and the same thing happened in my school in dadar and they were looking for actors because for the drama uh, team uh, for the annual gathering and i said okay let me go explore this and i explored it and i was enjoying it and it was fun but the, when i went on stage to perform that was just another feeling like i realized that i have never felt so liberated and free mm. before mm. and i was 11 there was no way to like uh, you know word your thoughts mm. so specifically and articulately that this is making me feel this way and yeah. you know this is what liberation feels like and mm. all of that um but uh, but it made me feel differently than i had felt ever yeah. in my life and i was like okay this is probably what i want to do mm. and very funnily i was giving my oral exams okay english oral exams 
and in sixth standard i uh in our class we were asked what is it that you want to be when you grow up and i had put my hand up because i was a huge cid fan so i had said i want to be and uh, no Wait i remember second. you were watching cid and you wanted to be a cid officer yes well done somehow the acting part of it <laughs> no but the funniest part so okay i'll tell you the story in cl- in that class she was like uh, our teacher was like i'll uh, you what doctors and you know the 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 three things that we knew back then that we could become and she was like okay is there anything else that i have missed out on and i confidently said yes i want to be a cid officer and i had no idea why she remembered it next year when i was giving my oral exams when this stage has happened to me and i was like okay okay now i want to be an actor because this is fun and i have gone to that oral exam and at the end of it she was like um, you know i hope that you are able to do what you uh, you know planned on being plan on being and i said yeah so she said uh, you remember what you had said do you know what you said when i asked you what you wanted to be and i said i want to be an actor because at that point in time that was taking over and she i could see the disappointment on her cid face. officer yes actor actor and she was like no but you said and i said oh that's correct because i had conveniently forgotten about so i could see the disappointment disappointment on her face on my teacher's face and i said acting so i think like mithila darwaza tod mithila ne wo tod diya hopefulness ka darwaza hmm. <laughs> but uh, but um, so essentially that is where i was at right like in my heart i always knew this is what i wanted to do i obviously ran away from it because i grew up with my grandparents and my grandfather was very strict uh my maternal grandparents and he there was no chance that i could convince him that i wanted to be an actor so he said okay okay yes sir bachcha cute do this in school as your extracurricular activity after college you can't do this so, okay so i made most of it in my school and college because i thought i will not be able to do this yeah and then prithvi happened <laughs> prithvi happened uh, because i uh yes wanted to be close to theater because i couldn't act because i didn't have the permission to so i said but what is the way that i can actually just be around stage and um, i volunteered at thespo which is a youth theater festival that happens at prithvi every year so it was in its 14th year and i volunteered for it and then i just again there was just another joy to just be around theater and people who make theater so uh, that happened and then Thespo ended up making me meet a lot of people who I have eventually ended up working with. Dhruv Sagal being one of them. Was that time around the point when you said, "No, this is what I want to do," and it's was there a yes. point when you came around saying, "No, I know this is supposed to be a side thing that you do apart from your career, but this is the career I want." Yes, it was. I think somewhere I always knew, so I didn't try to run away from it uh, too far. but there had to be a way to make it more practical than just saying i am not going to do anything else i'm just going to figure this out because i come from a middle class family so there was no i didn't have the privilege to say oh i'm not going to do anything for 2 years and just figure my life out um if i could have done that great but i didn't have the privilege to do it um so i had to find a more practical way to do it and uh, i told my grandfather that I, it's actually event management because thespo is an event and i am helping organize it so i was not lying yeah, and i would fair. not lie to him very valid uh but i i chose an event that very selfishly so and then i when i saw people so it's a festival for people who are 25 and under 25 so these were people who were as old as me or just older younger or whatever and they were putting up these kind of plays and i said i don't want to be on like in on the other side like i don't want to be backstage i want to be in front of uh, people and i want to be on stage and performing when i watched all these people i was like are ye to meri umar ke and they are doing exactly what i want to do and why am i not doing this so that kind of pulled me into it a lot more then i started auditioning so i said okay now i guess this is time to just take the plunge i i also heard from friends who are in theater singing this almost like a, a slight shift you need to do in the way you look at cuz in cuz my question always was when singing in theater you're doing the same thing again and again and mm-hmm. again for every this one and it requires you to look at your craft differently in 
when you're doing it for screen, you might do multiple takes, but you just then you're done and you move on to the next shot. So you look at it differently, and it, obviously the process and the technicalities are different. Was it a conscious choice to say, okay, I want to look at screen? Now? Um, no, I wanted to be an actor. It didn't Wherever, matter what it, was. it didn't matter. I yeah. I was too. I just I was very hungry for just to be able to perform. and i was looking for any opportunity that would let me do that so when screen happened it felt like a natural transition it didn't feel like oh this is something i'm consciously doing of course you're right like the technicalities are very different now in fact i find it every time i'm doing my play and i go back to doing my play which is very rare these days unfortunately but when i do my play with ak various i find it very hard to be a stage actor because you have to project and you know you have to you are not talking to a person who's here you're talking to people who are far back and most of the times they can't hear me because i'm not used, like this is something that i have to constantly keep retraining myself in so it was a very it was a natural transition it was not something that i said oh i just want to stick to theater and i wanted to act jo bhi mujhe wo kaam dega i would i was willing to do that and i did exactly that which brings me to a very important question and a question i've been wanting to ask you uh, ever since we decided to do this that we often have a lot of these stories of people who have come from outside the city to be in this industry there's always a story about i came to bombay and this is how bombay was and it took me time to like you know become get you grew up in bombay but when you transition from this living in bombay to working in this space in bombay it's still a journey there mm. right did did parts of the shift almost feel like once again this suddenly feels like a different space or was it like simpler it was simpler because i wasn't thinking so much about it because mm. i felt like any way work is work whether i was going to go to an office or whether i was going to do this of course it's a very different industry and space and i know that yeah. we all struggle to kind of like find our bearings here and it's a lot more overwhelming also but uh, but i wasn't thinking about it in that direction at all like i was just head down and keep going because i was just trying to like climb onto every branch that i was finding so it didn't really feel so strange and but like over a period of time i knew that this part of the city is work this part of the city is home and that's it doesn't matter how much i have to travel or how far i have to go yeah home is in one place and work is in one place that i knew that all always so you set almost physical boundaries yeah. for life boundaries i so set like, physical boundaries you that's correct you cross this part of bombay you going into workspace you yes. cross this part you 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 eventually it became that because yeah. i was like okay at some point you to switch off and then you have to switch on because you're on your way to work so it 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 was very it was a very subconscious thing that happened it's also not something that i say oh okay now i'm passing the crossing the mahim creek and now i have to become an actor <laughs> that's, that's not how it is really do you have you always found it easy to switch off and switch on from things or are you switched on in general because it's it's very easy to get back home and still be thinking about work and thinking about this and that and most times i can most times i think How? i can please explain most <laughs> of us struggle with it i am terrible at it please explain the secret <laughs> this is always 35 channels on in my head so i'm able to switch this off and go on to something else and they get completely distracted by the issue at hand because i'm already like so the oh. secret is if you want to switch off we switch on another channel <laughs> it's the unhealthiest way of switching off <laughs> so don't take this advice from me at all <laughs> No, but but seriously, like, explain what the other channels are. What do you switch on to switch off from work? It could be anything. Like even if say, chalo, I've woken up. I have woken up to see on Instagram there is a new song that has released of Rajni Kant. Hmm. Yesterday so, it came out. Yesterday it came out. So I said, okay, today my YouTube is going to begin with that. So that's that's it. Then suddenly I have remembered that okay, I have to make chai. So then it's so for me, I transition from thoughts to thoughts very quickly. I don't sit and I guess that's also. uh probably a reason why i don't wallow or like to wallow about things too much because i can't i'm very restless that's why i said that you find the like you think i'm calm is great because that's something i'm that's something i'm consciously trying to work on because i always find myself being this restless person i'm always looking forward to doing okay what what's next what's next what's next so it's always from one event to another event in my head so it's never so that's 
that's why i think i switch off when i've actually not switched off really i've just moved on to another yeah channel yeah but i think it's an interesting way to also find calmness right and find things i, I feel that just because you're saying you're switching off doesn't mean you're fully off you're always thinking of something else yes you finding something else to engage yourself so you're not always obsessive because the problem is that we all tend to obsess over one thing and that just like one spiral that keeps going down and down and here we switch on to other things which are just generally lighter at least or are, are, are coming down like the rajnikanth song can come it on it's still very fun to do um i yes. i really enjoyed i enjoyed watching it the, <laughs> the vibe of that song yeah. uh, and and then again then then chai or like you know having family around having someone to kind of talk to who is not only tuned in to work yeah yeah that always helps so i always say this that going back home was always a switch off for me and quite literally now i don't live with my grandparents but that was always a switch off for me go into the house and the most humbling feeling is to be at home with them because they don't view me differently i'm still the same person that they've known for me to be i will always be the one who's the youngest in the house so ya pe chad ke wo dabba nikalna upar se is always my like there's not a thought of oh now how can we tell her to do this or to get coriander from the shop there is no there is no division like that and that makes me very happy that they are not viewing me differently it happens with extended family but i'm glad that I can go home and be myself. You said that you're the same person. It's very easy to get into this industry and not stay the same person, right? Yes. You're constantly have a lot of stuff thrown at you saying this is how we need to be, this is how we need to, you know, and this is how you need to be, this is what you need to do are two things which get thrown at you so much. How how have you or rather how and why would be two things is thing you resisted the need to become what you're often told you have to become so to go back to what you mentioned about you kind of find your calling when you're a kid in terms of your personality that was my my core personality is a rebel like as a kid i w- i was always adventurous growing up i was like kuch conventional karna hai nahi mujhe ye karna hai uh so I, essentially that's where it comes from i my trajectory as an actor has also not been the most conventional trajectory uh and it's not something that i have consciously done it's just happened it's like whatever made it happen happened whatever ways or paths that i chose to take it just it it was different from what i was told that you are supposed to do so when i started out as an actor i was told do tv do television that transition is easier and i was like but why why and i get very irked when i am told this is on the only way to do it and i'm like no but like i'm here to find those other ways and i'm sure there will be other ways there are always 10 different you know paths to go in a direction so i will let me find it but i was told very vehemently by some people that you do television this is the easiest do south south films do south films only then you can like that is an easier way and i said but why like i will do all of this when i think the time is right when i feel that it's right to do it and i generally as a person also if i don't feel 100% about something i don't do it because i feel like i'm not doing justice to that thing so even if i'm told that you're supposed to dress a certain way and act a certain way and be a certain way i can't because it doesn't come naturally to me and what doesn't come naturally to me sounds seems very uh, for the lack of a better word fake to me so then i don't buy into myself and then that's very scary so i have to believe in something that i i am told also okay advice is good and you take the advice but i am able to or eventually i have learned how to balance it out that at some point okay i don't have to be such a rebel that nahi main pajamas mein hi niche utrungi aur bhaji leke aaungi i don't have to do that really like there's no need to just be a rebel without a cause okay i can be presentable and go um there's nothing wrong with going in pajamas i'm just saying you can do do you do you but uh, but for me i was told that you have to get your like you know just be all the time you have to do your makeup and hair and 
there are times when i do it because i enjoy doing it there are times when i feel like i don't think i want to do or be indulgent about that today so i don't do it i just go by the feel so i guess your how and why is this and I, and i guess that shows right it it, it shows in the kind of choices you always made in the kind of roles you've done it also kind of shows in just generally how you are um and what i feel most people don't get is that in making these choices is actually what makes you unique yeah. otherwise you're just one of the same yeah uh, you 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 will pretty much be on you know, the same factory outlet that uh seem to churn out a yeah. lot of different kinds of actors who have such similarity that you can't pick them apart yeah and i i mean not to say that i'll never do a commercial film i will but i will do it when i feel like it i did a telugu film last year but i did it because i enjoyed the script and i enjoyed doing it and and now i feel like i want to do a lot more films but but it only happened 6 years after i started as an actor and not the first year when i was told no 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 this is it this is what you have to do i just can't i can't when i'm forced to do something so how did you how did you pick the the first couple um, girl in the city was the first one yeah show sure, yeah first show first show and then some of the sketches were with dhruv yeah uh, filter copy filter copy and that's how little things happen that's how little things happened actually how i picked the first one was uh because of dhruv actually mm. i there is a show that filter copy did called news darshan mm. okay and uh, it was loosely based on what john oliver does now john oliver is excellent mm. but i enjoyed his content and the show he does mm. so i said oh okay this was the brief that i got so i said okay great i will come audition so i auditioned for it and they sent me a script so kartik krishnan from filter copy and dhruv mm. were on like working on this show and dhruv had met me at thespo yeah. or seen me or something like that and mm. then he referred yeah uh, me to kartik and uh, i went i auditioned and i i did it i did it because it was very interesting to me uh, and uh, i have i actually really enjoyed doing that for 8 months so we just did that show and we completed a season of so every friday or thursday or something like that we released it and uh, from until december we finished that entire season and then the sketches happened with dhruv the confusing things girlfriend say annoying things boyfriends do which very weirdly went viral and we didn't know what that It's meant relatable yeah but we didn't know what that meant until that happened because i knew that if i become an actor and if there is a public life that happens to me then i want to keep those two things separate because it's it's just easier it's not that it doesn't mean that i'm some other person on my public and this but i i wanted to keep those lives se- separate even for my own family's privacy so and friends so then uh, so that happened and i was like okay suddenly i'm getting these requests and this is great and then life suddenly changed after that and then girl in the city i auditioned for actually so then um, meanwhile while these uh, videos were being shot and released and all of that anand tiwari got in touch and said who's the producer uh, on girl in, of girl in the city he um, he reached out and he was like we are doing the show do you want to come and audition it's a very interesting thing la 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 i went i auditioned i got the part and we were supposed to shoot so all of these videos were happening in jan feb then march my cup song video happened and end of march i shot for sari shooting for girl in the city so this is all 2016 your cup song video sir super interesting it's so much fun it is fun and i literally did it just for that i didn't think because i didn't know what it meant i still don't know what goes viral and how no honestly knows. you nobody knows exactly so back then i said okay now i have a page of my own because i started a page now because it's a public space i need to keep filling it in right because now what do i do with it so i just sang the song and i enjoy doing it and i put it out and it was such a joy to see what happened to it but yeah if you look at that period of girl in the city and then little things happening right after that what the things about you as a person and you as an artist that you you also realize that you know that okay this is things that you are adding into the mix but also things you are realizing about yourself but how you are evolving not consciously uh every i mean i think now in hindsight i feel like maybe i have because especially with little things what happened was it like it took its own course of like us growing up with the characters also 
and uh, dhruv as a writer also gave me the liberty to do whatever i want of course his words but use them the way i wanted to um i remember that um at our first table read kavya sounded a lot like dhruv because dhruv has a very peculiar way of we all do but dhruv has a very peculiar way of speaking and i was like ye yeah, iske tere tarah kyun baat kar rahi hai <laughs> so he said i do what what you want with it these are your lines you can so he gave me that liberty and then we had excellent directors and makers and all of the team was excellent to work with so but we grew with those characters and we started taking them very personally in that sense and because uh, they were second skin to us even today if you like just wake us up in the middle of the night and make us play dhruv and kavya i'm sure both of us would be able to do that just like in our places so um the 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 growth as an artist was very in, like in hindsight now is interesting to see because we were just doing because we were enjoying what we were doing even girl in the city as a show it was very it was a new concept to me so i was finally getting to act it didn't like there are people who have pointed it out to me that you're playing the title role do you realize that and i'm like oh okay like that, it it had to be fed to me for me it was an opportunity to work like this is it um with little things it became a lot more personal because the show that we have developed all of us together uh we've given the characters our voices the team that has worked together has continued to work together until the end of four seasons and uh, at one point and i remember season 3 is my most favorite season also because the story of kavya and mine was very similar in terms of parents are growing old you're not living with them but then you want to be there for like there were stories that were inc- instances that were very similar and they were very palpable and i was like i was almost scared that am i her am i me am, like what is going on so in that sense there was a lot more um, ownership of the character and i said ye and i've told dhruv who's the maker of the show and the characters and i said ye gali nahi degi ye aise nahi baat karegi because i just like she's mine and i will do whatever so in term in 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 that sense it was a lot of um, interesting learning and of course as it put us on a map on the global map like nothing else has like today no matter where i travel in the within the country or anywhere else in the world little things is one reference that people have not stopped using and that's incredible for me i'm sure for the rest of the team also because that's a show that like everybody has watched loved related to uh, globally so in that sense also as an artist it, it feels really fulfilling that you're you know it, it's like a baby that has like gone out in the world and grown as well as it has so in that sense there was a growth but there was no consciously like i was like this as a person and now it's made me this as a yeah. person i don't it's all a side side no it's all a side yeah, side it's it. never really no i think also little things the interesting part was that for anyone watching and and from purely as an audience is that it makes sense when you said what you just said is that you almost felt like the characters were real and and i'm guessing that's why because it almost felt like there was an overlap almost yeah. in terms of how you were because some most times you can figure out okay someone's playing a character and you yeah. know that and because you're watching it you know that is a fact but here there was almost like that line became so um gray yeah and that actually is what made it more relatable as well i guess because it felt so real in terms of when you were watching it um, does that also make it almost like a focus for you saying i need to pick roles that don't make it seem like i am being me no cuz those were always easier to do i think um again in hindsight the roles that i've picked so or uh, ended up picking around that time like girl in the city or ka- little things or anything else that i did after karwa. they were all very yeah very similar to karva actually was not so similar to who i am but karva eventually happened but like uh, they ended up being shades of me and i have realized that now in fact last year very consciously i've realized that i want to do something that's not me at all like i would totally want to do like a psychological thriller and play an assassin and all of those fun things because um, as an actor it limits you in a sense in the sense of like 
are you like it made me question myself that am i really able to do anything differently then or are people only viewing me like this because it's the only Girl way they watched me uh, yeah very easily stereotyped which is also easy in the in in, in the industry if you like kind of keep doing the same thing again and again then people are like acha ye isko ye aata hai acche se karne to yehi role se but i'm actually grateful to people who eventually ended up coming to me especially over the course of last year from whatever i have shot for whatever i have shot everybody came to me with a different role with a different character so i wanted to lap that opportunity up i don't know if i've done a great job or not or whatever but i enjoyed doing that because it was different from what i played that doesn't mean that i'll not go back to being the girl next door because that's something i it's my comfort space tell me about the um, first couple of films that happened how was that cuz see it's almost like you've gone from stage series and then there's movies and and cinema and I, and i also think that some the movies you did were so interesting again because i going back to your rebel point of saying you don't pick a role that is what someone say this is the role you should pick after this <laughs> you're always like one second uh, this this role even though you're playing a character which is in some form connected to what you played but it's still the the the, the overall show or the, or the movie kind of feels like one second this is not you're not going in the same template of things um first film i did was actually katti batti hmm. uh which was in nikhil advani yeah. so nikhil so uh, i mean um, mukesh chabra was the casting director and shweta tripathi was his associate casting director who knew me from thespo yeah so she so thespo is basically <laughs> the central point of everything of everything literally literally if i give you examples of every thing that i have done especially in the beginning of my career girl in the city anand tiwari so thespo people do theater go to thespo that's right mm. that's not on me <laughs> but that's correct though and i always say that it doesn't matter if you want to be on stage off stage or it's a great networking space you just get to meet a lot of fantastic people even if nothing comes out of it in terms of the entertainment industry you will just go back with a lot of wisdom <laughs> so so which is useful to you eventually so girl in the city anand tiwari um little things dhruv somi at thespo um i have auditioned a lot with karan mali and nandini shrikant because of thespo who and eventually they cast i was they were the casting directors of karma so akash khurana thespo so there's a lot of that but uh, but kati badi happened to me shwet because of shweta who called me in for an audition at mukesh sir's office that audition happened nikhil sir liked it and then the film happened uh similarly karma also happened uh, i auditioned for it Nandini and Karan were auditioning. I auditioned for it. Um, that was such an interesting cast. Yes. When I saw that, I'm like, what's it? <laughs> such a like a like from three almost different spaces. Of- it was completely. It was. Ex- I mean, in fact, exactly what you're saying. It was just we were all from very three very different spaces. I was completely an internet child. Yeah. Irfan sir was Irfan sir, and Dulkar was. Yeah. the king of the south yeah. <laughs> so so, <Yeah. laughs> so it was very fun to actually be part of that cast and it was also like a there was travel and there was i have always found that the the best kind and this is me person being behind the camera for so long before i started to do this is that when you're shooting anything which has travel involved it's a lot of chaos but it's a lot of fun it was yeah. a lot of fun and we were not on the side of chaos because Yeah, we are. We are on the other side, na. So we are the, the chaos <laughs> happens behind the camera side. Yeah, so we were enjoying. Yeah, we got to go to this location. It's going to be sunny in the in the shot, but it's raining today. Sun le karao. I once had someone say, "Ki kal so mana sun na pade." And I remember the director of photography was like, "Mere control mein nahi kaha se launga." But Avinash Arun was a lot of fun to work with as yeah. a DP. He was like, he was fantastic. He was quick. He knew his. lights and angles and everything so even on the rainiest days we have wrapped up our shoot and then just gone back so it was it was a lot of fun were there things that because you're from three different worlds and I, and I, and I go to karma primarily because i think it's such yeah. diverse ones um were the, were your processes different or was it something which you fed off each other easily processes were different because i was that child in disneyland 
because this was the first film set that i was i was the lead actor in in a bollywood film so that was essentially like my first film as a lead actor right and then i have to share screen space with these two who are already so loved and and of course like for their craft not just because stars so i was just like why that wide eyed child in disneyland and even if i was not shooting i was on set because i had to sit and watch them because it was fun so we had different processes but we we ended up adapting to each other very easily so it took me a while to actually not laugh at irfan sir's jokes as shaukat because tania and shaukat are characters don't get along so but he was so funny and i had to tell myself that i'm not his audience i'm his co-actor who doesn't like him so i have to keep reminding myself i had to do that but it was a lot of fun he was so curious generally also because i remember he was going to shoot for a web show after the film and then he was very curious of the space so he used to sit me down and ask me very like kaise chalta hai kaun dekhta hai you know who's paying for these uh, platforms and how people how are you reaching out to people la 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 that was fun and dq was he's actually very chill to hang out with and uh, and with dq uh, and me what had happened was embarrassing but he knows this so i don't i'm not shy of admitting it that i had not watched his films until i had met him and obviously okay kanmani was a rage because i think uh, okay janu was yeah. had just released or was releasing or something like there was there was buzz so i knew that it came from there so i said okay i have to watch okay kanmani and then i watched it then i tried watching it the night before i was supposed to meet him and my internet decided to give up on me so i said okay third world problems to maine kaha theek hai abhi dekh liya hai aadha pura dekh lungi and then i entered that room aware uh, all the dress uh, whatever look tests were happening and then he's sitting there on his phone in like casual cap and if i didn't know who he wo- like who he was i would have never known because he's that like an assume very chill so then it was easy and it's akash essentially like as a, a, the director is the captain of the ship because it's really the director that m- drives the mood and the pace and everything of the set and akash is, is just really fun to be around so so it was a party <laughs> and you, and then you done a telugu movie i did that which i'm very excited about i'm i'm gulti so for me then even <laughs> i'm very excited because um, and that must have been a whole different it was experience. a different experience it was it's a different world it's very interesting uh i actually did a remake of a tamil film mm. what i enjoyed was the fact that there was nobody like i was not the only one who didn't know the language mm. on set so most of the crew was from the tamil film so they knew tamil they didn't know, know telugu mm. so there was always a translator somewhere in between mm. our associate director was a translator like he would speak both languages fluently mm. and hindi so that was easy and uh, very welcoming mm. very like fun and i i chose it chose the script very consciously because i had more things to do in the yeah. film than just be yeah. uh, as an actor a female actor so um, so i fully enjoyed yeah. i enjoyed it so much that now i'm like now give me more <laughs> you know when i think about this entire journey you've had and where you where you're going it's it there's, there's there's lots of learnings there for people to get right is that you know when you're seeing i go back to you saying you were always a rebel is that it lets you choose a path that might to most you will seem like why is this the path that you're choosing but it becomes a uniquely you and secondly it makes it a lot more fun cuz you also don't know what to expect which is why i'm guessing you're always worried yes. about what is the worst that <laughs> will happen yeah there are pros and cons to being this <laughs> yes but uh, yeah 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 you're 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 fully right like i think i enjoy the unknown a lot like when i was doing this telugu film i was so excited because i didn't know the first word of telugu tamil there has been a still a, some sort of an influence because my my aunt is married to a tam bram so there was ms subalakshmi is because of her so there was some then uh, when i was living with my parents my child my chaddi baddi was a tam bram i've practically 
spent a lot of my time in her house so there was sun tv on all the time so kuch na kuch i have heard of the words at least so there was some reference telugu had no reference to even though one of my closest friends now is shreya never spoke telugu to me shreya then mantri and i eventually learned that she was telugu but uh, I, the girl i worked with in thespo is also one of my closest friends in thespo but she never spoke telugu so i had no sense of telugu in my life and when i did this film i was like okay i have to emote in a language that i don't understand mm. and that was challenging for me so i think i enjoy the unknowns because it's 50 50 na it can go this way or that way yeah. it's for you to figure it out why go in a direction where you know south films karke hi fame milta hai wo direction mein to to pata hai na tumko to wo nahi karte kuch alag karke dekh and also if you have to choose a fixed template then then what's the fun in choosing a space yeah. like this because the whole point of working in a space like this is the fact that you you get to create your own path in in different ways in different up, different ups and downs and but if you look at yourself from the time thespo happened <laughs> seems to be a defining point you know, <laughs> it it was to now if you look back and we're doing hindsight here were there things that you wish you knew then that you know now that being an actor is not just acting and it comes with a lot of other paraphernalia like walking on red carpets and <laughs> and getting dressed and because that also actually picked up eventually like the whole like get photographed before you go to an event was a thing that wasn't there since the beginning of time more recent it's more recent um i also wish somebody told us how to give interviews hmm uh because it's not that it's just the right thing to say and wrong thing to say just generally like what is expected of you because i am a i can sit and talk for hours cuz i am a very chatty person it doesn't like i'm not saying i have to be very specific but generally like i think a little more grooming would have helped i think not that i regret not having any cuz i learned everything on field everything i was just thrown in it and i was like okay okay i'll try this i'll try that also but uh, but that's something that i would have i think would have liked a little bit of just in on ki this is what you're supposed to expect um the expectations generally to you know abhi now everything is out in the open because of social media there's nothing so secretive i think when even if it was just 6 years ago it was still not as out there as it is now so i guess now people just know it gen z is way better at it than we are i think but uh, but yeah that's something i i i wish i was told that actor ko sirf acting nahi karni hoti hai aur bahut sari cheeze hoti hai with it that you have to be you know careful of you mentioned social media and we all have our own unique relationships with social media it's such an integral part of how we live our lives most times also not in the best way hmm what what would you say your relationship with it is i've grown on it so it's the most like i feel like it's second nature to me in a sense and not in a sense because i don't put everything about my life on social media and while i do believe in being real on it and i'm quite close to who i am on social media on my public spaces but if there are days when i'm feeling low i will switch off like it's not something that i will go on to telling people that i'm feeling low and again it's a personal choice whoever wants to do that and prefers doing that is also great and i feel like it's okay to not uh and it's not something that i'm embarrassed of or something that i don't want to like i don't want people to see that side of me i'm not shy of admitting that i've had days when i've just not wanted to and i'm a very social person so it's like it's very rare for me to feel that way but i do so there are so again social media is also something that i have i will do as per my discretion don't tell me what to do it's very uh, so so you don't have a quarter calendar no i really don't even if there there are days when i'm like okay i have not posted something in a while and then i go scrolling on my in my gallery and i'm just like okay what do i post eventually i get bored of the scrolling and then i'm like this is now seeming inorganic to me because i'm forcing myself to post and i'm not finding anything so i'm forcing myself to find something to post i don't want to do it and i don't post so i am that person on social media so that is also the same it just 
I don't view it very differently. So every time my manager wants to tell me something, कि ये करना पड़ेगा, it's a very there's a trepidation in like uh, me. Will you do it? <laughs> so, <laughs> because I'm like नहीं करना है, filter नहीं लगाना है, ये नहीं करना है. But I am that person across the board. It's not there's nothing special about one space that I am, and I enjoy being everywhere. So is there? I, obviously, there was a, there are many pieces of advice which. Once you didn't follow, and you made it on par. <laughs> but was there a piece of advice that you got that you that really stuck with you that you used through the years? Uh, dude, through different phases of my life, in and the advice has been worded very differently by different people. And just last yesterday, somebody gave me the same advice. But clearly, there's been a sense of consistency in that. That. Put your head down and keep going. Don't get indulgent of the chaos that's around you because it's always going to be there. It's very hard to do it, but it's a it's it's an advice that I hold very close to my heart. As and as an actor, one advice that I will never forget was given to me by a fantastic light designer called Arya Lahiri from the theater from Thespo. That I mean, I met him there. He said, "Always know your lines." and metaphorically also it makes sense in the in the world but he said don't ever go on a set emotion and all you can put eventually but never like don't be that person who doesn't know her lines so as an actor that's an advice and as a life put your head down just keep going as a person who can never remember lines i will say that no i'm very good at that. i can't no memory only I am that person who will need like teleprompter at worst case scenario, or like will say like one one line at a time. People behind this camera will watch for this fact. They have seen me go through it. I but can it's, have, but I can have two hour conversation, but I can't remember an exact line. So the one thing that school taught me was ratta manna. वो मैं नहीं कर पा. तो मैंने वो करा. I'm a very bad student. I'm Hence. bad student. You must be intelligent, ना? तो अपना मतलब you could Scrape have through. created things on your own. I, I had to mug up. <laughs> <laughs> so that came in handy but in life see school never goes to waste so uh, so i so telugu i learnt as a poetry i had long lines i had three four pages of fighting scenes that i am fighting meaning like arguments when i'm driving it's raining i have to slap him and all of that and i had to learn my lines i have to say i had to say things so i was very very scared of that but uh, music also comes in handy because of that like i love learning songs in different languages and that's also because and the, then on my telugu film set i said don't give me one extra word because now this is a meter that's set in my head now you add or take away a word i'm confused because mai padhai karke aayi hu so basically we've learned many things from you uh, one is to a go to thespo uh, to change your life um to to be a rebel when and but i especially like this last one is the fact that um there's a natural rhythm you got to catch yeah guess that natural rhythm things happen thanks so much for doing this it's been fun thank you for having me <laughs>